I'm going to devote a little bit of time now dealing with what I would call an insurance policy. Because I just want to make sure that you are aware of how foreign currency works in the group context. Because if he does spring a surprise and re-examines foreign currency again, I want you to be prepared for that surprise, but it would be a surprise, I can't tip it, but I just want to have a little 20 minutes, half an hour on it. On the same basis, I don't expect it to be a group profit loss account, I'm not tipping a group profit loss account, but again, I want to give you an insurance, I want to give you an awareness of how you would deal with it, because question number one is compulsory, and... Uh, you know, you, you've got to be able to have a go. Now, the question we're going to have a look at to illustrate this is Tracy, which is on page 62. If we do have a foreign subsidiary question, the subsidiary's accounts are prepared in their local currency, and they have to be translated into the presentational currency of the group. So all the information is given to you in dinars. All the information is given to you in ringgit. All the information is given to you in whatever it is. But you've got to produce the group account in dollars. So there's a translation process. Assets and liabilities closing. Income and expenses average. Goodwill closing. The exchange difference arises on the retranslation of the net assets. The exchange difference arises on the retranslation of the goodwill, and there is an exchange difference arising on both of those. So in terms of your workings, you're working two net assets, you're working three goodwill, should be done in the dinar, in the crown, in the shilling, in the ringgit, whatever the foreign currency is. <coughs> And this will then enable you to calculate the exchange difference on the retranslation of the net assets and the exchange difference on the retranslation of the goodwill. Page 62. Two minutes, please. Can you RTQ, read the question? And we're just dealing with a small technical aspect on, in the middle of what would be a big question.
calculate the group exchange difference arising on the retranslation of the net assets of Ben and on the goodwill of Ben. Tracy has acquired an overseas subsidiary and done this at the start of the year by taking a 60% controlling interest for seven. So the cost of the investment is seven. The NCI is three. The presentational is the dollar. The functional currency of Ben is the crown. Now the net assets at the date of acquisition of uh, Ben is 7,000 crowns. So the net assets at the date of acquisition of Ben is 7,000 crowns. Ben has reported a profit of four. Ben has reported a profit of four. So the information in the question is presented to you in a marginally different way than it might be in an exam context. Or this could be a little question as part of section B. Because what you would normally do is work out share capital, retained earnings, other fair value adjustments to get this figure. You'd then take these figures to get this figure, and then you would work out that figure. Does that make sense? So what must the figure be? What must the net assets be at the year end? 11. Now, we're going to do a translation process in a minute to discover an exchange difference arising on the retranslation of the net assets. How is the profit going to be translated? How is the profit going to be translated? Income and expenses are translated at the average rate. How is the year end going to be translated? Closing rate. And the opening balance will be translated at last year's closing rate. In other words, the opening balance will be translated at the opening rate. I don't, this is me just playing with you. This is me just recapping with you. Yeah? I'm going to go straight into it. I'm going to go straight into the calculation yeah, of the exchange difference on the retranslation of the net assets. Calculation of the exchange difference on the retranslation of the net assets. Now, whenever you do an exchange difference, everything is beautiful when it's in crowns. You start off with seven, <coughs> then there is a profit of four, leave a space, leave a space, leave a space, and you end up with 11. When you are calculating an exchange difference, everything is always beautiful and logical and perfect in the cram in the foreign currency. But we're going to be translating these numbers at different rates. And when we translate the opening balance at the opening rate and the profit at the average rate and the closing balance at the closing rate, there's going to be an exchange difference that we expose as a balancing figure. And because it's group accounts, the exchange difference is going to go to other comprehensive income. So, what we have is the exchange rates given to us in the question. The average rate is said to be four. The closing rate, there are four crams to one dollar. So, to move from crams to dollars, you divide. At the reporting date, the rate is five. And the opening balance, the rate is three. So, some of this I can do in my head. Some of this I'm good for um, in terms of mental maths. Uh, that should be 2,200. Where I'm struggling is 7,000 divided by 3. 1. I don't like that number, do you? 1333. 1, 2. 2, 3, 3, 3. Uh, that's not nice, is it? But there you go. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So exchange differences are calculated yeah, by taking the numbers at the right rates, but they're all different. So when you translate it into dollars, it doesn't quite add up. 
you're thinking it's 333, but it actually is 22. So therefore, you've got a difference there of 1133. Now, what would you call that 1133? Would you call that a gain or a loss? Have your assets got bigger or smaller? Smaller. So this is a loss. And does it go to P&L or OCI? OCI. This goes to other comprehensive income. So if you were doing a group P&L, if you were doing, if the exam question set you up to do a statement of total comprehensive income, revenue, cost of sales, distribution, and you had a foreign sub, this number would have to be calculated to be put into the group other comprehensive income. That makes sense? You would have to do this calculation, both if it was a balance sheet or a P&L. Now, this is on the retranslation of the net assets. It's a 60% sub. So 60% of that would go to other comprehensive income. And 40% of that would be attributable to the NCI. But in your other comprehensive income, it's one, one, three, three. And then in your balance sheet, you split it, 60, 40. Two minutes, three minutes. I would like you, please, to sort out the goodwill story. In order for you to sort out the goodwill story and the exchange difference on the retranslation of the goodwill, I guess one of the things you have to do is to calculate the goodwill first. Then, having calculated the goodwill, think about how that is then going to be presented in the group accounts in terms of the translation, and there will be an exchange difference. Two, three, four minutes, yeah, have a little go. Two, three, four minutes, have a little go.